Good to have you with us uh, this afternoon. This is your daytime update as we continue keeping you abreast of all the day's breaking and developing stories. And, and chief among those, uh, the breaking news that uh, KZN scientists have found that people infected with the new COVID-19 variant are protected from previous as well as circulating variants. I'm joined now by Dr. Sarah Stacey, and she's the head of infectious diseases at the Charlotte Matlake Academic Hospital. Good to have you with us this afternoon, Doctor. Uh, certainly some, some really good news there, but I, I, I guess for me, the, the point of caution comes with the, with, the, with, the, with the disclaimer that in as much as you may be found to be immune uh, from reinfection, no one really quite knows for how long you'll be immune for. Um, what is the general practice as far as the, the way that viruses behave with, with immunity? Um, so so it, it varies very much from one virus to the other. Um, there are, um, you will develop an immune response to, to most viruses that you are infected with. And um, sometimes that immune response is very effective and it's effective at eradicating the virus and protecting you from reinfection. And sometimes it's not that effective at eradicating the virus, and sometimes it doesn't protect you from reinfection very well. So, for example, um, with HIV infection, we develop antibodies to HIV infection, but it doesn't eradicate the virus. Um, with flu, for example, you will develop an immune response to flu, um, and your immune response will help you to get over your bout of flu. But by the time the flu season comes around the next year, the flu virus has mutated um, often in such a way that you are, you may be protected to some degree from your antibodies from your previous flu infection, but you may still be reinfected with, um, with flu. So it varies very much from one virus to the other how effective your antibody response is. Um, and in terms of the coronavirus infection, you do develop um, antibodies in response to the coronavirus infection. They probably last about six months, um, but we don't know whether or not your um, antibody response, you know, people have variable degrees of an antibody response and we don't know how much antibody you need to protect you and we don't know really how long that, that antibody response lasts to protect you from coronavirus. And, and this may be a very basic question, but you know, from the novice standpoint that I am, does it then mean that if you cannot be reinfected, then you also cannot infect others? Yeah, well, so yes, that, that's probably the, the, the truth, but um, it is possible sometimes to be a carrier of an infection. So you can carry an infection in your nasopharynx, for example, and you can transmit it to other people without developing an infection yourself. Um, and we don't know, I think at the moment, how well um, your previous infection or how well your um, vaccine works to prevent asymptomatic transmission, um, asymptomatic infection and transmission to other people. So we, you can't say, well, I've had a, a good bout of, of COVID and therefore I am not a risk to other people. We can't say that for sure. You probably don't, you're probably not one of the big spreaders. You know, you're probably a, a spreader when you have the infection. Um, and you're, you know, symptomatic and you're coughing. But we can't say for sure that if you um, have had COVID before or if you've had a vaccine that you cannot transmit to other people. And, and that perhaps is the reason why we're still told to maintain all the regulations, still keep safe, wear the mask, uh, sanitize, keep um, the, the requisite distance. But one of the key yep. features that came out of, um, of that briefing there was the nature of the mutation and, and just how quickly this virus is actually mutating. If you could talk us through uh, the mutation process, how a virus mutates. Sure. So uh, viruses mutate on a regular basis all the time. Some of them mutate more rapidly than others. Um, the coronaviruses have what's known as a proofreading mechanism. So every time the coronavirus copies itself, it needs to copy its genetic material. And we as humans, when we make new cells, we have proofreading um, apparatus in the cell that will make sure that the copy that's been made is the same as the original. And we'll go back and correct um, uh, the mistakes that have been made. Some viruses don't have that capacity. Coronavirus does have some proofreading ability, and so it doesn't mutate as fast as some other, um, uh, other viruses. 
But mutations tend to be random. So they occur on a regular basis and they're completely random. The, the virus is not doing it with some kind of design um, to change itself. They are random mutations. Um, and some of those mutations are, um, don't have any effect on how the virus operates. They just, they're present, but the virus operates in the same way. Some of those mutations will be detrimental to the virus. And so obviously the virus that has a detrimental mutation isn't going to be a virus that continues to replicate effectively. And then there are mutations that, also, that occur randomly that make the virus a better virus, that make it more efficient at transmitting itself, because that's essentially what a virus wants to do, it wants to be able to transmit itself. And that's what our, well, I don't want to say our, we don't want to say the South African variant, we want to say the 501v2 variant. Um, that variant um, is more effective at transmitting itself. Um, and, and so that virus, that mutation is then maintained because it makes the virus a more successful um, virus. It's a process of natural selection that those viruses that are better at transmitting themselves are going to be the ones that are selective for and will, um, as we have seen in our country, become the dominant strain. And it took a very short period of time for that virus to become the dominant strain in South Africa, and that's the one we're seeing new infections with at the moment. So if you could just break this down for us, there, there, there was uh, a phrase that was mentioned there that variants have different mutations or several mutations and that yeah. there are currently nine mutations of the 501Y uh, V2 um, virus. What exactly does that mean in layman's terms? So it means, so um, a mutation happens when a, an amino acid at a particular site in the genetic code is substituted with another amino acid. So um, we say 501Y because um, at position 501, the amino acid has been um, substituted. So the original amino acid from the wild type variant has been substituted at that, um, at that locus by another amino acid. Um, and that has occurred nine times. So at, at nine different um, locations in the genetic um, code of the virus, the, there's been a, an amino acid substitution. Unfortunately, and Dr. Stacey, I'm, I'm going to unfortunately have to cut you off there okay. in the middle of no this problem. very interesting um, explanation. Uh, but thank you so much uh, for your time and for explaining all of that to us. We certainly hope to be touching base with you uh, soon again to continue uh, deciphering this process of vaccination. Um,